Good morning, Grace St. Paul's. How is everyone doing? Okay, all right. All right, so I'm going to start with uh, the name tag uh, escapade, and then we're going to finish with the name tag pieces. So as you probably heard, most of you uh, heard on the way in, uh, this is the day that we're checking to see if everybody has their name tag on. And if you do, um, you will be, uh, there will be a raffle for you to win a particular prize. So if you have your name tag on or you have a name tag in the back and you can get it on and you didn't get a raffle ticket, raise your hand. Wow, they did a great job. The ushers must have get done a great job. Okay, very good. All right, so when I finish announcements, we will draw the prizes, all right? And, of course, our whole goal here is to get everybody to start wearing name tags again. As you see, the rector is doing a great job with that. So pay no attention to the man in front and, uh, <clears throat> and wear your name tag, okay? All right, very cool. <clears throat> so we can all get to know each other again after all this COVID stuff, all right? All right, very good. So thank you for that. Um, all right. Photos. We are also redoing our photo directory. So uh, if you have not uh, had your picture taken by John Banks yet, who was standing in the back waving to everyone. There he is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, John is in the office area, which is right next to McBride Hall, uh, taking your photo. So after the service, if you want to jump over there, he will take your photo and uh, for our next photo directory. And thank you for doing that. And he's going to be doing that for the next two weeks. So we need to get finished and get everybody's photos taken. All right. Very good. All right. Very good. <clears throat> um, I wanted to thank... Those of you um, who were here yesterday for the service for Greg Poling and all of you who helped with that service, uh, as most of you know, Greg was a very, very close friend of mine for 20-some years, and I was grateful that we had the opportunity to do his service here yesterday, and uh, thank you all for, for helping with that. And I mostly held it together yesterday, not quite, but mostly I did, so thanks for all of that. And I want to thank uh, the Reverend Larry Weeks for preaching today so that I could concentrate on that eulogy uh, yesterday, and that's going to be very helpful too. So uh, I'll mention that. Uh, the Reverend Larry Weeks has not preached here for a long, long time and uh, has been a part of the congregation here for several years, uh, but is going to be in, in, uh, in the pulpit occasionally for us, and I'm grateful for that. If the name Weeks sounds familiar to you, uh, I'm going to let him tell you all about that, but he has a long legacy here at Grace St. Paul, so you will hear all about that, so thank you. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, yay! So uh, we urge you to wear orange or red for that service next week, uh, for that giant celebratory service of the birthday of the church. So uh, if you can do that, that would be great. At the 10 o'clock service next week, we are going to have a mariachi band and all kinds of Latin music throughout the service. It's going to be so cool and fun. So uh, that will be a great, great day on Pentecost. Um, if you detest mariachi music, you could go to 745. But I'm telling you, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, so check it out. Uh, that's next Sunday. That'll be great. And then uh, following next Sunday, um, we will, as we move into June and the first Sunday of June, uh, the clergy and those who are serving at the table will not be wearing any clothes anymore. No. That's, that's, not, that's not exactly what I mean. What I mean is we're not going to be wearing these robes, but hopefully we'll have something on underneath the robes, okay? So um, 
so we, did, we started this last year that we were just wore civilian clothes and a stole uh, during summer uh, for practical reasons and because we thought we wanted to make that statement that we're all kind of together. So, uh, so during the summer, that's what we're going to do, and we will start that uh, the first Sunday in June. All right, so just wanted to prepare you for that too. Uh, remember, coffee hour has returned in full, so coffee hour after the service. Just head on over to McBride Hall, and we're all set on that front. Uh, let's see, we have a few more burial services coming up. I can tell you that B.J. Bauer's service is scheduled for July 28th. I can't tell you anything else about it yet, but if you want to get that on your calendar, B.J. Bauer. Mary Fitzgerald's service is not scheduled yet. I think it will be a couple weeks before that, but we will let you know as soon as all that happens. And today we are going to congratulate our graduates, and all of their pictures are in the bulletin. Uh, but we'll do that in the middle of the service, okay? So page 31, that starts on if you want to look ahead at all of our graduates, so that'll be great. And just a reminder that everyone is welcome to communion at Grace St. Paul's, regardless of your faith tradition or where you are on your spiritual journey. <clears throat> Please consider joining us for communion. When you come up, signal a one if you want just bread, and signal a two if you would like your bread intincted in the wine. We are so happy you are here on this seventh Sunday of Easter. Welcome. Welcome to the GSP online community. Your presence is a blessing to us all. Note that there now is a GSP online community discussion forum available. It can be found by searching for GSP online community in Facebook. Now folks in the church, turn around and give a friendly greeting to our online friends. A warm welcome to all.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Holy One, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Help us see your presence in the hearts of those we do not understand. Grant that we may be united in a fellowship of love and prayer. Give us the courage to be your hands and heart in the world. Amen. May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Threefold one, relationship in unity, love given and received through all the ages long. Give us that unity which is not enclosed, but alive and accepting with the open heart of love through Jesus the Christ, the glory of God. A reading from Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, They went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
Santo Evangelo Jesu de Nestro Salvador Jesus Cristo Segu Juan. Después de decir estas cosas, Jesús miró al cielo y dijo, Padre, la hora ha llegado, glorifica a tu Hijo, para que también Él te glorifique a ti. Pues tú has dado a tu Hijo autoridad sobre todo hombre, para dar vida eterna a todos los que les diste. Y la vida eterna consiste en que tú conozcan a ti el único Dios verdadero, y a Jesucristo, a quien tú enviaste. Yo te he glorificado aquí en el mundo, pues he terminado la obra que tú me confiaste. Ahora pues, Padre, dame en tu presencia la misma gloria que yo tenía contigo desde antes que existiera el mundo. A los que escogiste del mundo para dármelos, les he hecho saber quién eres. Eran tuyos y tú me los diste, y han hecho caso de tu palabra. Ahora saben que todo lo que me diste viene de ti, pues le he dado el mensaje que me diste y ellos lo han aceptado. Se han dado cuenta de que en verdad he enviado de ti, y han creído que tú me enviaste. Yo te ruego por ellos, no ruego por los que son del mundo, sino por los que me diste, porque son tuyos. Todo lo que es mío es tuyo, y lo que es tuyo es mío, y mi gloria se hace visible en ellos. Yo no voy a seguir en el mundo, pero ellos sí van a seguir en el mundo, mientras yo que me voy para estar contigo. Padre Santo, cuídalos con el poder de tu nombre, el nombre que me has dado, para que estén completamente unidos, como tú y yo. Jesus looked up to, Jesus looked up to heaven and said to the Father, the Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all who have you, you have given him. And this eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, I glorify you on earth by finishing the work that you gave to me. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those who you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave me to them, and they kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave me I have given to them, and they have received them to know in truth that I gave from you. They have believed you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All, are my, all, all mine are yours, and all yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name and that you have given me, so that they may be one and we are one. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, o Christ. Well, in the uh, two or two and a half years I've been coming here, diving into the back row, I have noticed that 
um, many of the sermons, uh, most of the sermons, are started with a, a, a great quote, a quote from something relevant to uh, what the preacher's going to say, or just, just great quotes. Some are biblical, some are scriptural, some are from the culture. So here's mine. You can't always get what you want. You can't always get what you want. You can't always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. Please be seated. So I'm going to make the first bit of this uh, chat uh, about me. And then maybe we'll go on to some other things. Um, so as uh, Father Steve indicated, I have been here actually a long time. Um, my part of the latter part of my adolescence was spent here. Um, uh, my father, uh, as you may know, or may remember, some of you may remember, uh, was the rector here for a number of years. Uh, more relevant to me uh, is the fact that uh, the discernment committee um, of uh, Grace St. Paul's, then was Grace St. Paul's, uh, let me out of, let me on the loose uh, into the wild to, to seminary, and I'll always be grateful to them. And so Grace St. Paul's, for me, when I came, moved back to Tucson, um, it felt like home. I mean, it feels like home. It wasn't the church that I was brought up in. I am what, what is called, well, I've, I've modified that, of course. It used to be called Cradle Episcopalian, but I think I'm more of a glint in my parents' eye Episcopalian. <laughs> been, uh, been a long time, but I do remember, and I remember being imprisoned as a preacher's kid on these first three rows. And if you can, with my mom, she I'm sure felt imprisoned as well. And if you, being a preacher's kid, and if you remember the awkward adolescence, you know that that was uh, uh, karma, to, to tell you the truth. And so um, my, my parents are right out there in the columbarium. And on Sundays, shockingly, they, uh, they're shocked. They come in where, and I'm back there, and. Um, if on those Sundays you may feel uh, a breath on your cheek, um, you may think it's the air conditioning, but it's my father, the inveterate extrovert, going around greeting everybody, whether you want to be greeted or not. <laughs> and my mother, uh, having been burned by the first three rows uh, uh, in her time here, is sitting next to me, telling me to leave my sister alone. Don't tease her. <laughs> So, um, I'm all, but I'll always be grateful to my mother for um, making it okay for me to, um, uh, because she did, uh, what she called, because I gave her as a teenager a lot of flack about it, church dancing. What that means is uh, my mother would stand next to me and she moved like this, like a metronome in time to the music. You may think, well, that's ridiculous, or that's cute, or whatever you think, but I've been back there for two and a half years, and I'm not the only one in the church doing it. <laughs> and so, uh, don't watch me now, because I still do it. I like to move, and uh, David rocks the Anglican uh, choices that we have, and so I like to move to music, and uh, that's part of being uh, who I am. And who I am, I will move on now, who I am a little bit is uh, I am a baby boomer. And uh, yeah, I'm in good company here. Yeah, that's right. And uh, as such, um, I uh, have lived through a lot, like, like everybody, uh, other baby boomers. Uh, but I'm still cool. And I am cool enough to know that uh, um, everybody now is worried about or engaging with, in some form or another, AI, artificial intelligence. I know what AI is. 
And uh, not only do I know what it is, but I called upon AI to help me with my, as a Methodist would say, my message this morning. I typed in uh, to chat GPT, I think, yeah, uh, GPT, um, uh, a progressive uh, sermon for the seventh Sunday in Easter. And then I just sat back and, you know, because I'm cool, and waited. <laughs> and sure enough, it came back. And you know, well, more about that later. Um, so also, as part of being a baby boomer, I um, call upon uh, my, uh, my experiences, as we all do, as, as many preachers do, um, trying to uh, meld them with the, the lections, the readings for today. And uh, I've also, uh, one of the things about being, when you get older, when you're a baby boomer, you, you time travel more. Uh, and, and, and that's another way of saying you, you memories come flashing out to you in the weirdest, the weirdest times. Um, oh, and by the way, let me add that in 1968, the backup singers for Keith Richards and Mick Jagger on You Can't Always Get What You Want was the London Bach Choir. <laughs> True. Go listen to it. At any rate, so I've done a lot of time traveling, obviously, uh, along with bucket lists, and um, at, this, at this stage in my um, uh, journey, and perhaps you do as well. And you all know that music is, uh, is an incredible time, uh, trigger for time traveling. You hear a piece of music and you're, you're taken back. Um, a, a word may flash, uh, you may hear a word and that may take you back. Food, smells, all of that impacts our, um, our brains and brings forth memories. I call it time travel. But the fact of the matter is, because we're Anglicans, because we have this mystical, wonderful Celtic tradition of, um, well, we'll talk, what we'll talk about later, what, what we call now the spirit, we actually do time travel. We time travel in the Eucharist. That's one of the geniuses of, <coughs> excuse me, of, uh, of the Eucharist in, in the churches that uh, do Eucharist, and that is because we give this tactile, the bread, we actually touch the bread and, uh, and, and, and the wine. We touch it. It's, and it's not like that reminds us of anything, but we are transported back to an upper room, whether we know it or not. Whether we feel it or not, we are transported. It's time travel. So I was time traveling when I uh, read the uh, Acts today. I was time traveling when I um, heard the last week, when, I heard, when we heard last week Jesus uh, talking to um, the disciples uh, and in John, actually. And um, today... Um, Jesus is again talking to the disciples, although he's talking through, through Luke in Acts. And last week, Jesus told uh, the disciples, don't worry. Tough, tough that. Tough to get people to stop worrying. He says, because I'm going to go, and when I go, I'm going to give you an advocate. I don't know if you remember that from last week. Sometimes things just leave me as I leave the door. But that's what, that's what Jesus said to the disciples. I'm going to leave you an advocate. Now, that's an English translation. And other translations call it a comforter. But I like advocate. But in the Greek translation, and, and just bear with me for a minute. I, I, I'm not trying to be that cool. And um, it means um, the word was paraclete. Weird church word, right? Weird Bible word in Greek because, you know, John was written in Greek. Paraclete. Now, that means literally in Greek to bring someone beside you, to walk with someone. Just go over here. Get over here. Right here with me. And watch out. Watch behind me. All right? Now, um, and that's sort of comforting, but um, my law training, I like the word advocate better. But when I first typed in paraclete, in, in uh, what I was writing about something a long time ago, 
uh, Microsoft Word spell corrector. Didn't get it. They, they might get it now, but they didn't get it. Yeah, right? You, uh, you know what, the, what it corrected it for? Parakeet. Parakeet. <laughs> now, this whole sermon isn't full of jokes. Don't, don't worry about that. And so I like that, too. It's nice, you know, the advocate and paraclete right on your shoulder. Someone who has your back. Now, another bit of time travel that I went through is when I was uh, in, in high school, uh, and that's what this reminded, this, this reminded me of as well. Um, uh, my parents sent me to visit my aunt and uncle in Chicago. I, I was coming from Texas where we were living, and, uh, and I was a junior, I think. It was my late, awkward adolescence, and, um, and, but, but Aunt Lou and Uncle Bob were favorite. Maybe you all had aunts like this. They were childless, aunts and uncles. They were childless, and they spoiled all of the Weeks kids, I mean, all of the people who had children. So a trip to see Aunt Lou and Uncle Bob was great, you know. So I went there during a spring vacation of my junior year, took the train, right, uh, from Texas. But, uh, you know, I was, I was feeling pretty good about it. I got up there, and my aunt said, we're so glad you're here. And I, th I was thinking, you're ready, yeah, yeah. And she said, because we've set you up in a date with a friend of mine. Uh, yeah, who wants to go on a date that their aunt set them up with? <laughs> when they're like an awkward adolescent. And uh, so I said, no, I, yeah, you know, started whining. And, and she said, no, you're going to do this. And we got you tickets to this great play. We've heard it was great. We read about it. And uh, you're going to take her out to dinner. And um, so, you know, I didn't have any choice. I mean, I tried to get out. I called my mom and dad, but they said uh, no. And um, so time came. I, and and, and the, to, to put a cherry on the top of the whipped cream, uh, I had to drive their car, my aunt and uncle's car, a big Buick. Ugh. <laughs> anyway, so that was it. So I drove the Buick over the person, I, the, uh, Allison. She was great. She turned out to be great. And, um, and so, right, if you try sometime. Anyway, um, and so then we went to, uh, uh, drove down to the downtown Chicago and uh, went to dinner, and then we, I had these tickets, and then I went, we went to this place, and there was a big sign on the outside of the place, I never heard of it, called The Second City. Oh. Right? If you try sometime. Anyway, and so, uh, but I didn't know what improv was. I was from a little bitty town in Texas. And uh, not that I have anything against Texas, but I don't. But, uh, you know, it, it, uh, plays were like the thing your school put on. You know, our town or something like that. So, okay, we're in. So I walked in, and you all must know about this, but you walk into a, a, an edifice, a building, that's called a black box. Which, right, you've heard of that. It, 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 and you walk in, and it's just a, it's, it's a cube, it's a big cube, and it's black. It's black because you, you, th there's nothing on the walls because the people are going to add the stuff, uh, apparently. And so there's a bunch of chairs. Uh, and um, so I sat down, we sat down, and these actors came out. Six or seven, six people came out. And, uh, and, they, and you all know how this works. I didn't know, so I'm letting you ex experience it with me for the first time. And they said, uh, uh, to ask us to do, give us a word. And, uh, and then it went on from there. And I was electrified. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I always liked humor when I was growing up, uh, you know, because it was, I think, trying to make people laugh was always an adaptation, <laughs> a behavioral adaptation of mine in stress. But, uh, but, but, it's still humor. And so, uh, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, my world uh, turned upside down in, in the sense that uh, I, I just, I was glued to everything. I couldn't believe they were so smart, so clever. I couldn't, they would, uh, so somebody would give them, I don't remember what it was, but somebody would give them some, you know, a bus driver uh, uh, loses his shoe or something like that. And they would all get together and they'd talk, you know, and then they would put on this amazing vignette some funny, some tragic, 
some sad, uh, some uh, dramatic, and they were amazing for me. I mean, just that experience, that watching something at work among this group of people who were feeding off of each other. Off of each other. It's not like they had a script. You would say something, and I would go off of that within the context of... Uh, so, um, improv. I, I was, uh, to, to, you know, to coin a phrase, I was blown away. And so, um, I, uh, I don't know why I thought about that in this business about being a witness in Acts. Jesus says, I want you all to be my witnesses in Salt Lake City and in Phoenix and, you know, in the, wherever you are, you be my witnesses. And then, you know, Jesus goes, ascends. This is like the ascent, part of the ascension reading. And so that's what this is. And we're in a transition today. This Sunday is what? It's the seventh Sunday. We call it the seventh Sunday because, you know, there have been seven of them. But this is the last one. This is it, right? Everybody's wearing orange and red next week. No more Easter, sir. We change colors. This, no more white. It's, this is it. You know, he's up there. And, of course, in the cosmology of the Middle East, God's hung up out, out, up there. Now, we have heard over the last two Sundays that fortunately, or, or unfortunately, the church kept that. This is, you know, God's not really, you know, God's up there. And, but we have heard that the real story is that God is here. God is among us. But back then, <laughs> they were still looking up. So Jesus said, I want you to be witnesses. And then the messengers from God, these two angels, um, said, uh, don't look up. Look around. Look around. Look who you're with. Look who's coming. Look what's going on. Don't look up. Don't look up. So, improv. And graduation speeches, right? This is the season for graduation speeches. And what we've heard in the last couple Sundays is uh, Jesus' graduation speech to the disciples. None of them were summa cum laude, obviously. But um, so he's been telling him, he's getting ready to go and you're getting ready to graduate and uh, you're going to be a witness. And so um, it came together for me. Uh, and the people who went to the second city, you all know who they were because it, was, it became a huge deal, right? Uh, Stephen Col Colbert, John Belushi, Chevy Chase. And we all know about them, not from Second City, but from Saturday Night Live. And they went on to amazing careers. So this was an extraordinary experience. I don't, I don't even remember if any of them were there when I was there. Probably not. But it was amazing. So at a graduation speech... 2011, Stephen Colbert went back to his alma mater, Northwestern University in Chicago, and he talked about improv, and improv because he was in improv, duh, in the second city, right after he graduated, because he was a theater major. Well, here's what he said. There are very few rules to improvisation. But one of the things I was taught early on is that you are not the most important person in the scene. Everybody else is. And if they are, they are the most important person in the scene, you will naturally pay attention to them and serve them. But the good news is this. You're in the scene too. <laughs> so to them, you're the most important person in the scene and they will serve you. No one is leading. You're all following the follower, serving the servant. Now, I'm here to tell you that the key to being a witness, the key to not looking up, the key to being with God, as our reading from John would 
imply for us is improv, the improv method. Now, you might say, well, what did, you, did you go to improv, Larry? Um, you know, you seem to love it so much it changed your life. No, because I'm spiritual and not theatrical. But I follow it assiduously. And improv is living in a way that we can always be concerned with having each other's backs and never worried about our own back because we are so sure that everybody else has ours covered. We cover people's backs, not just our friends, not just the people we work with, not just our family, but everyone we come in contact with. Or, to put it another way, our neighbors. We have their backs. Now, it turns out that there are three rules in uh, improv, and they were actually written by a, a comedian whose name was Elaine May, and another improv uh, pioneer in the 50s, uh, at a kitchen table, and the rules are called the West, in, in St. Louis, they're called the Westminster Place of Rules. And the rules are simple. And together, they're the best structure for living Jesus' command to be witnesses. The first rule is, don't deny reality. Now, don't deny reality means to accept what is before us, to see what's before us, to accept what is before us and who is before us. No matter what they look like, no matter what they're wearing, no matter where they live, they're before us, before us. Accept them. Realize that change will happen if we will but try. And growth will happen. And it's what happens when we love without judgment, when we interact without judgment. More about that later. So don't deny reality in the, in the patois, in the jargon of improv, has come to be called in the shorthand, um, yes and, right? You say something, yes and, not and more necessarily, but and, how about this? Yes and, that way you're right there with the reality of the person in front of you. Yes, the, the earth is flat, yes, and non-judgmental, amazing. So um, the second rule, which, uh, which I like, is um, all of a sudden my notes jump to page Sorry. Yeah, talk about reality. Uh, the second rule is um, that we, there is no, oh, the, okay, there's no, the second rule is that, um, this is really important, make strong choices, if you're on the stage about what you're going to do. The less obvious choice, the better. Make strong choices. The less obvious choice, the better. If you're in New England, maybe you say it's a road less traveled. I don't know. But now we're in improv. The less obvious, the better. Or in a word, risk. Don't be afraid of the outrageous idea. <laughs> Remember, there is no such thing as a mistake. No matter what happens, as players on the stage, we have each other. No matter how bananas things get, or quiet things get, or flat if a joke falls flat, or if people start to walk out, we continue to take risks in love for and with one another and the people that are our neighbors that we encounter because we know that fear 
present as it is, is really the death of creativity. And that's, that's the thing about rule two. It fosters creativity. The third and final rule is, sounds like a Hallmark card, you are you. And that means what you think of as your character is really what you think of as your character. When you go to work, I put on my work character. When I'm up here, maybe I'm a little more of a performative character. But no matter, when you are on the stage, what you think of is your character, it's not really me, is really just a magnified piece of you. You are you. You are you, and it's okay. In improv and in life, that means that trusting that you are enough. Now, remember, we're having each other's backs. Yes, and you are enough. And it's imperative that you claim the authority to do what nobody else in the world can do or say but you. Now, let me give you an example of this business of serving the server from a, a book about um, the, the second city and improv. So there was a, a guy that joined the improv uh, group, and his name was, I don't know if you guys have heard of him, Bill Murray. <laughs> and he joined the group because his brother, Brian Murray, was already in the group, in the second city group. And, you know, Bill was cool, but uh, what you can't do in improv is belittle, remember? We're saying yes and belittle the joke. So someone will say, yeah, the, the bus driver's shoe fell off because it was a clown shoe. And Bill would say, a clown shoe to the audience. And he'd get a big laugh. He'd get a big laugh because, you know, sort of funny. And because uh, he's making fun of the process. And so he would get a lot of laughs. Bill Murray's a funny guy. But it didn't forward the improv uh, um, uh, narrative, even the crooked improv narrative. And so they, they sat down with him and they said, look, um, <laughs> this is what improv is. You don't, you play off, you serve other people. And he finally got it. He did, well, he finally got it and he became the, the leader of the second city and then went on to, uh, to his... Um, to his just rewards as an improv player. And then the book goes on to say, if you talk with famous actors, Chevy Chase, um, Bill Murray, and ask them, who are making a lot of money now, you know, successful, and ask them, uh, how's your life? And they say, well, you know, I'm sort of miserable a little bit. Nothing was as good as when I was in improv. And the reason for that is because of this notion of everyone having everyone else's back. Everyone carrying around a parakeet. Everyone carrying around um, the notion of yes and. And everyone remembering to be you. Now, this is not just some cute little um, saying I'm, I'm trying to get across to you be, because um, this, uh, this, of course, applies in our individual lives, but it implies it applies in our lives as a parish. Don't deny reality. Speak the truth. Oh, um, yeah, I have a little note down here. This says, what, what about the AI? What did the AI say, you clown? <laughs> well, it came back. And here's what it said. Remember the question? What's a progressive sermon for the seventh Sunday in uh, Easter? Remember that? Came back. It said, Beloved, listen to Father Steve. <laughs> Amen.
Let us say together the affirmation of faith in your bulletin on page 11. We are entrusted with God's kingdom. We are a community not abandoned, but commissioned by God. We are a community not broken by the world, but empowered by our time. Let us state what we believe. We believe in God, the creator of the universe. The one who began the dawn of all time. The one who sets the time and keeps the time. The one who meets us in our time now. We believe that all of God's creation is good. All things that creep and crawl and wander and roam, God made for good. All things that croak and howl and chirp and whisper, God made for good. All things that lay dormant or spring up or rest, God made each one good. We believe in Jesus, God's flesh on earth. Our brother who taught us faith, our Savior who leads us on right paths when we go astray, our way who aligns our life for goodness sake. We believe in the Spirit, God's energy alive with us in this precious moment. Source for all freedom, the fiery power within and beyond us, power that stirs up complacency, conviction of truth that we believe that every beginning and every ending is fortified with God's grace. God is ours, and we strain to see God. We are the family of the earth, the kingdom of creation. In God we are redeemed and brought home. Let it be known in us and in our living this day and for every gifted day to come. Amen. Living Christ, you are risen from the dead. You are life stronger than death. Raise our eyes to see you as the new day dawns. Give us the faith, like Thomas, to doubt, knowing that when we seek the truth, we find you. We pray for the church. Today, we offer our joy that we celebrate your glorious resurrection with our brothers and sisters around the world Envelop your people with a sense of your risen presence today and always. This week we give thanks that the coronation of Charles III included interfaith representation for the first time. For the household of faith, the Church of the Risen Christ, we pray. Be with us. We pray for our nation. God of hope, teach us the difference between reaching down and reaching out. Guide the many of privilege who determine the destinies of others. Give us the grace to change our lifestyles when others are exploited by the way we live. As the deaths continue from shootings in Texas, Georgia, and around the country, we continue our appeal for a ban on all assault weapons. For our nation and for our common good, we pray. Be with us and guide us to We pray for the whole world. God of creation, you have given us a world of glorious diversity. Give us the eyes to see the beauty of your cosmic patchwork. This week, we pray that the deaths at Churchill Downs and other racing venues prompts an investigation into the care of horses in the sport. For the welfare of our world, we pray. Be with us and unite us, O God. We pray for this community, God, who came to earth as one of us, Help us see you in each member of this community. 
Bless the many gifts of our members and keep before us the image of the servant Jesus that joined with him, we remain ready to kneel with basin and towel before each other and before those you continue to bring into our midst. This week, we pray that Governor Hobbs' action to support shelter and transportation needs for asylum seekers are helpful and compassionate. For our community, we pray. We pray for all who suffer. We also pray for all on our prayer list, as well as those we name now. Tammy, Kyle, Michaela, Catelyn, Judy, God of compassion, open our hearts to bind and heal in your name. This week, we especially pray for all those who continue to suffer from gun violence. Bless all of those who ask our prayers and give us courage to learn the names of others. For all who suffer and struggle, we pray. We pray for all who have died, including B.J. Bauer, Greg Pauling, and Anel Gooden. God, you have loved us from before birth, and we continue to love us beyond the grave. Comfort those who mourn, that they, be, they, they may be assured with the same hope of resurrection. Mary Fitzgerald. For all who have entered new life in Christ's resurrection. We pray. Be with Give us and, and raise, raise us, O oh God. God. We give thanks for the blessings of our lives. May all of us continue to experience the risen Christ through the gift of each other. God of love and compassion, be with us and thank you, O God. Receive these prayers, O God, and transform us through them that we may have eyes to see and hearts to understand, not only what you do on our behalf, but what you call us to do, so that your realm will come to fruition in glory. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be always with you. So with you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. God, please. Alrighty, it's graduate time. Do we have any graduates in the house? I see one. Get up here, Edwin. Who's up there in the balcony? Get down here, Anget. Come on down here. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on down. Don't jump. Go down the steps. Okay. She's upstairs, yeah. Hey, Bill, how are you? Good.
I should have warned her. Yay! Come on up here. How's the lake? Good? All right. Okay. Okay. All right, let's pray for our graduates. Um, so let's, let's all uh, consecrate our graduates together, okay? So if you'll put your, extend your hands out and we'll all bless them together. All right. In every beginning, oh God, I can do this. In every beginning, O oh God, and in every, every end, something new begins. We are full of joy and congratulations for our siblings, Belle and Get, Edwin, Ashol, and Eric, who have now graduated and are ready for new learning and experiences. Grant that the gift of wisdom will continue to be bestowed upon them as they grow into fuller stature in Christ. Grant that they may hear your still small voice in their heart saying, this is the way, walk in it. Help them preserve old friendships while creating new ones. Give them each the gift of discernment for their futures. Grant that we who love them may help them find their own voices, their own words, and their own path to justice. Amen. And you can read all about them in your bulletins. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations to Seoul. How was Chicago? That's fine. Good. All right. Nice. There is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus.
giver of life, receive all we offer you this day. Let the spirit you bestow on your church continue to work in the world through the hearts of all. Amen. This morning we have Luke with us at the table because together we are all the body of Christ. Welcome, Luke. God is with us. God is present here. Rejoice, lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts to the Most High. Let us give thanks to the Holy One. It is right to offer thanks and praise. We praise you, God of freedom, for you breathed life into the void and showed yourself as the one who loves in freedom. We give thanks for your risen son, Jesus, who was dead and buried, but who you raised and is alive forever, reaching out to us, wiping away our tears, and calling us by name. From the nothingness of slavery, you called a people into being and led them to springs of life. The presence of your glory went with shattered exiles into strange and distant lands and gathered from the valley of despair the flesh and blood of living hope. In Jesus, you confronted the powers that killed and oppressed. You spoke to those considered dead and helped them stand again. He taught us to die so that we might live. He gave himself for us tortured and forsaken, but he could not be confined by death. In the garden, he speaks our name. In the breaking of the bread, he shows himself among us. By the lakeside, in the new day, he calls us to take up his work. Therefore, with all who lost faith, all who walked away in sadness, with the women at the tomb and the men who hid in fear, we confess ourselves, surprised by the suddenness of dawn, and join the undying song of heaven. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful caretakers and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet, Yet, you, you never, never cease to care, care for us, us 
and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ fills all creation. Alleluia. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with Paul, Jackson Kemper, the Venerable Bede, Augustine of Canterbury, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Be known to us, risen Christ, in the breaking of the bread. Hallelujah. The bread which we break makes all of us one with you. Beloved, this is the body of Christ for the body of Christ. Be what you see, receive what you are. Okay, look. Ready?
Let us pray. When Mary, ready to embalm the dead, ran in fear from the empty tomb. It was Easter day. When Thomas touched the wounds and set himself free. It was Easter day. When Emmaus became synonymous with welcome and the breaking of bread with strangers. It was Easter day. When the hungry are fed at the same table as the rich. It is Easter day. When weapons are beaten to plowshares and peace is a word to be shouted. It is Easter day. When the stranger is welcomed in community and the lonely are restored to relationship. It is Easter day. Amen. And now may our words and our lives bear witness to the Christ who has ascended to be everywhere present. And as you come to know him, may God give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. May Christ Jesus lift up his hands and bless you. And may the spirit open us to create unity in a divided world. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the resurrection. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks.